nothing like the chance to talk to a big crowd of New Yorkers and members of the American and New York labor movement. I am so excited to see all of you here. I want to thank Alethea for that incredible introduction. I'm so proud of her and the young woman she's become. And it is an exciting chance for me to thank all of you who have been friends and supporters over so many years. I want to thank Randy Weingarten and the American Federation of Teachers. Gary LaBarbera and all of the New York Building and Construction Trades Unions. Stu Applebaum and the United Food and Commercial Workers. Laborers General President Terry O'Sullivan. Jim Callahan and the Operating Engineers. SEIU 1199 and everybody, thank you. All of the unions represented here and the 23 national unions who have endorsed this campaign. And then I want to thank our elected leaders, starting with Governor Andrew Cuomo. Thank you so much, Governor. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. It's wonderful that you're here. And I thank you for your leadership on so many issues and in particular, the Fight for 15. Thank you, Governor. I want to thank Mayor Bill de Blasio. Thank you so much, Mayor, for being here with us. And I always have to mention thank you for your leadership, and in particular, universal pre-kindergarten for all the children in New York City. Thanks to Tish James, Scott Stringer, Melissa Mark Viverito. It is so great you all are here with us today. I also want to thank my friends from the New York Black, Puerto Rican, Hispanic, and Asian Caucus. I was so grateful to earn the endorsement of 46 of your members yesterday. And we have a lot of work to do, which is why I thought it would be a great idea for everybody to get together. We set this event for the day after Super Tuesday, and boy, am I glad it worked out so well. Yesterday was one for the history books. Our campaign went nationwide, people in every corner of the country came out to support the future we're building together. And we could not have done it without labor. We won union households from Iowa all through the states that voted yesterday. And I know that we had union members going door to door in Texas, home care workers making calls into Massachusetts, teachers helping to turn out voters in Alabama, and so much more. So first and foremost, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything you did to give us those great victories we had yesterday. You know, I think a lot about the fact that I am the granddaughter of a factory worker who operated a loom in the Scranton Lace Works in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and the daughter of a father who ran his own fabric printing shop and a mother who had to work to put herself through high school as a maid. They made sacrifices for me, and I will never forget that. So my respect for hardworking men and women runs deep, and I've always believed that when unions are strong, families are strong, and America is strong. That is not a slogan for me. That is a statement of fact. You created the strongest middle class in the history of the world. You led the fight for affordable health care more than half a century ago. And today, you're leading the fight to raise the minimum wage, which will lift 35 million working Americans out of poverty. The American labor movement 
is the author of that basic bargain that made America great. You know what it says. If you work hard and you do your part, you should be able to get ahead and stay ahead. Well, I was proud to be your partner when I represented New York in the Senate for eight wonderful years. After 9-11, we fought shoulder to shoulder to get firefighters, police officers, construction workers, and other responders the health care they needed and deserved. And whether it was pushing for a higher minimum wage or for the Employee Free Choice Act or to stop George W. Bush's plan to privatize Social Security, your fights were and are my fights. And we're going to keep fighting together for the country that we want for ourselves and our children. Here is my promise to you. And you know, I don't like to make promises that I can't keep. I am not going to overpromise. I'm going to tell you what I can do, and then we will work together. As long as you are fighting for working families in America, I will be in the trenches fighting alongside of you. And I want you to know this too. Labor will always have a seat at the table when I'm in the White House. You know, the stakes in this election have never been higher, and the rhetoric from the other side has never been lower. So we've got work to do, my friends. But not to make America great again. America never stopped being great. We have to make America whole. Instead of building walls, we need to break down barriers that are holding back families and our country and build ladders of opportunity and empowerment in their place. Let's start by getting incomes rising again. The middle class needs a raise. And I'll tell you this, I'm the only candidate running on either side who has said, I'm going to raise your incomes, but I will not raise middle class taxes. And we need to raise the federal minimum wage and support local efforts to go even higher. More states and cities should follow the lead of Governor Cuomo and the New York Wage Board. And I am proud to stand with the men and women in cities across our country, including here in New York, who are organizing in the fight for $15 in a union. Every worker, every worker everywhere in America deserves a fair wage and a voice on the job. And my friends, it is time we end the so-called tip minimum wage. We are the only industrialized country in the world that requires tip workers to take home their income in tips instead of wages. These workers can be paid legally as little as $2.13 an hour. And they have not had a raise in 25 years. That is shameful. No one who works full-time should have to still be living and raising their children in poverty. And the middle class also needs more good jobs. Jobs that pay well enough to raise a family, even put away something for retirement. Jobs that provide dignity and a bright future. That's why we have to invest in manufacturing, infrastructure, small businesses, and clean energy while supporting prevailing wage and project labor agreements. Yeah. 
This week, I'm heading to Detroit to talk about my plan to create jobs across our country. Don't let anybody ever tell you we can't make things in America anymore. We can, we are, and we will. If we change the incentives in the tax code, instead of favoring the export of jobs, and instead favor the creation.